right now. Um, the librarian and pay and how it works. And then you would also send um, uh, the statutes from the state. And I think Cheryl and I both saw that. And I think we both agree with you that uh, as trustees, you guys set um, the pay for, your, for the librarian and, and do the hiring. Um, oftentimes, you know, it's nice to have them introduced, but where we come in is, is at budget when we set the budget. So that's how that is. You are correct in your um, questioning. So I think that's okay. good that you're putting together a manual for that uh, office or that for the trustees. Okay, great. You know, it's funny. Um, I just set out to like write down the process because I didn't want to make a mistake. And, um, but when I looked into it, I was like, this isn't what I thought. So I didn't expect it to be that way, but that's the way it turned out. And so my hope is to do that sort of thing with all of the library processes, like find the statute and um, write down the procedures and then pass it over to you guys. So everybody's on the same page. Neil, could you mute? Uh, I think if you, unless you're talking, uh, everyone could please mute. Um, Otherwise, we're going to get some feedback. Thank you. Go ahead, Michelle. So, yeah, I was hoping to just keep writing down the procedures um, so that we have kind of a guide or for the next treasurer when, when I'm not treasurer anymore. And I'll make sure as I write them down, I pass them over to you guys so that you, you know and that you can, you know, see them and agree with them. And so That's perfect. And I think anytime there's uh, uh, something like this going forward, it'll just help consistency um, no matter who's in office or what's what's happening there it'll just be consistency for that particular group great well great. thank you yep you're welcome um so is there anyone else neil are you on for um public comment um yeah hi tom uh hi everybody so, yeah well, well I, I did um i uh, sent the petition from back in March uh, to you folks. I think Sasha sent it to you guys last week. So um, uh, just li lo looking to speak about that. Sasha wasn't sure if if you might want to address that in uh, uh, old business or or. No, I, you're on. We might as well go ahead. Did everyone on the board get an opportunity to see? Uh, Neil had sent in a petition. Uh, Neil, can you tell a little bit about your petition? What you're seeking? Yep. So uh, the petition is seeking a, uh, a special meeting to be called uh, on the question of whether uh, we should withdraw from the uh, unified uh, school district. Um, and uh, we did speak before. I uh, a couple of things that have happened since then. I think uh, one, everybody's gotten a little more comfortable with uh, with the, the Zoom meeting process uh, than you know. Of course, uh, right when I gave you guys a petition, right pretty much right when COVID hit and then we spoke again in, in July. Uh, but it seems like this is the new normal. So I thought uh, in that sense, it was good timing for that. Uh, the other, another thing is that um, the Consolidated School Board did vote last week to, uh, to recommence the uh, discussion of the merger uh, of the middle school uh, which would certainly involve the seventh and eighth graders, uh, and and could it's not entirely clear, but might involve the Moortown uh, five six as well uh, at this juncture. So in that sense, uh, uh, it, it it's presented itself something that, that that's worth taking a look at. Um, so uh, there's that, and then the final thing was, I think when we talked back in the uh, well both both times uh, there was the. The first divorce has happened of a consolidated school district. It's got some media attention. You guys might've heard about it. Uh, this is the one down South that I had mentioned that I was monitoring back when I initially talked to you guys. Um, and it did successfully go through. It, it was, a, uh, it was, it's a two town district that dissolved. So it's, it was a lot simpler than, uh, than what would happen here, but uh, it has happened the whole process, uh, including the review with the state board of education. So, I thought given those factors, uh, it was uh, time to represent it to you folks and uh, to move forward on it. So that's what I'm asking the board to, to do. Sure, well, I, I uh, seen it. I'm not fully on board personally. Um, first, you're gonna have to name, one thing I think 
you need to start over with the with the uh, petition. That, that petition was in March uh, pre-pandemic, uh, and a lot has changed uh, during this pandemic. Uh, we're, we're still in the midst of it. And yeah, I think we're getting a little bit better on Zoom, um, but there's still a lot of uncertainty uh, with a lot of everything. And I think this is not a time um, that I'm personally interested in. Now, you know, I don't speak for the whole board, um, but it's nothing that I can get behind. Um, and certainly I wanna listen to Kristen and see what she has to say. Kristen Rogers is on, um, on tonight I see as well. So um, engage a little bit, maybe more from her. Um, John, what, what's your thoughts? You need to come off mute, John. We're I definitely would like to hear from uh, Kristen. All right, so Kristen, why don't you, um, if you have a moment, Kristen, why don't you share with us what, what your thoughts are and what's going on? So uh, at the last school board meeting, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Sometimes my internet is a little funky. Oh, doing well. Okay. So uh, it, there's a discussion, uh, you know, well, I should back up for a second. You know, the pre-K through 12 committee had met during the summer and there was supposed to be a, a timeline and a data package that was supposed to be uh, put together by the admin team. But then with everything with COVID, um, that data packet kind of, uh, we agreed to kind of put that aside because of everything that the administration was kind of dealing with with COVID and figuring that out. Uh, it's still, you know, so we took a straw poll. Um, I was one of the ones that said, no, this is not something that we should be discussing right now. A lot of, in my opinion, a lot of things are up in the air, but it was, I think like a, uh, like a six, five or something like that to continue discussions about uh, merging 7th and 8th to cross it Brook to really dive into that to see if that's something that we're gonna take on for next year. So it is, my understanding is it's gonna be a topic of discussion at least at the next school board meeting, if not the next two, um, which the next school board meeting is the 14th, I believe we're not meeting this week. Uh, so we're meeting the following week. So that is, uh, that it is going to be a very highly discussed item, especially with, um, you know, related to budgets and being able to afford everything. So that's kind of, that's where it's at school board related. Is there a specific question I could answer? Because, um, No, I think for me, you, you just did as far as what's, what's happening with these two meetings coming up. Um, you know, I think that that's, will be a telltale and, um, so yeah, thank you for that. I, I appreciate you chiming in there and being on the call tonight. Ray or John or Don, uh, Callie, any any thoughts from you folks? Well, I can, um, I don't know, Tom, did you see the email from Laura Schaller? I did not. I okay, did not. Email, well, it was just a couple hours ago. She emailed you and, and me. And, you know, her feeling was just, um, you know, don't get complacent. And, you know, we still should, she th thinks we sh still should pursue it. And that it sounds like Faston and Warren are talking about it as well, about withdrawing as well. So, um, you know, I don't necessarily think that we have to start acting on it right away, but just to, keep it in the back of our minds that um, the Moortown five and six, six is still not uh, a dead issue for 2021 that still could come up. Uh, Don, Ray, any thoughts? So, uh, Kelly? Um, I think I'm, um, I think I'm barred. Uh, pretty much feeling the same way John is feeling that the, uh, I don't feel like I'm being complacent, but I, I'd like to hear what the school board has to say uh, at, at the next meeting. Uh, but uh, I'm not, I'm not this point ready to drop the subject. I just want to want to hear a little bit more about what's going on with the school board. Don, did you or Kelly have a comment? Kelly, see you coming off mute. Yeah, I think, I mean, 
I don't think this is going to be a short and quick process. So I think, I mean, if we're looking at maybe Neil having to get signatures again to look at this for a special meeting, I don't think it hurts to really to start discussing it and figuring out what it is because it's, it's not going to be a quick process. So this is something that's going to take a little while and potentially depending on where we are, we can always, you know, see where things are going. But I think we do need to start maybe looking at a little bit more. Sorry about that. Don, if you had. Uh... Um, I'm listening to everybody's comment and um, I'm not really sure how we should forward. I know that um, we only have a certain amount of time based on Neil's request to set up a meeting. And I know we need to work on some of the tools for that meeting in terms of, you know, with more people attending, then that's a screen from what I've been doing some research on meeting with a meeting, then you have a larger screen. So more people can come, come into a, a meeting than, than we have presently. And that's one of the ways I've heard towns have been doing that, but let's not go there. Um, yeah, I, I think it's worth carrying on and looking into. Uh, I, I've got to get more educated myself about it and to, because it really all comes down to you know, um, money and, you know, how it's, uh, how these, how we can um, finance our school and, and what the best way to do that is. So I guess I'm trying to I don't, I don't, I don't educating think, myself about that. I don't think by accepting this, this petition, by putting us, binding us into a 60 day window, um, I don't think it's wise. Um, we're not going to have, if, if it's something we do want to exercise or we think we want to do, we are not going to have the information needed to make uh, the best decision within this next 60 days. So I think it's, it's, it's premature. We've talked about that before. Um, and I agree with, with Lara, um, John, Ray, I don't think we need to be complacent about it, but I don't think we need to be, um, you know, scheduling meetings about pulling out yet either. I think we need to gather more information. I, I, I Neil sent a, an outline and I, I think it's interesting, but, you know, I don't think starting with the constitution and going through modern day, you know, and a number of people and, and such is the way about this and is going to be an effective way if it's something we want to do. Um, so, you know, I th again, uh, if it's something that the board wants to pursue, uh, I would really hesitate to take these 60 names or these 90 names, uh, names that he's got because it was pre pandemic. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, uh, what, what everyone's feel, you know, what your thoughts are, or how we should move forward on this. Can, can I uh, can I speak? Yeah, go ahead, Neil. Okay. Uh, so I guess um, uh, the last thing I want to do is is go toe to toe with my Moortown Select Board. Um, you guys are great. I I just super appreciate what you guys are doing. I would definitely I would implore you to give me some clarity as to what precisely you're doing. So what kind of action you take today and so just how I might move forward uh, after today. So I have a I have I got a petition signatures back in March um, and my understanding under uh, and, and this is I gotten to know a lot of sections of the Vermont code that I never knew before. Uh, but my understanding is that if, if the board select board is presented with a 5% plus petition, uh, uh, petition, then you are compelled under a section of title 17, which I think I referenced in my email to schedule a special meeting within 60 days. Uh, there are some, there's decisional law out there, including, uh, so there's basically the big one, which came a couple of years ago is the skip decision, which has to do with South Burlington. 
and the changing of the name from the uh, Rebels to the Wolves. Uh, and that was referenced by Judge Sessions back in January in his decision, uh, actually, that came from Laura Schaller and Pierre Langell's case, uh, that if, if the petition has to do with something that's sort of in the wheelhouse of the legislative body that it's being presented to, uh, then, then that legislative body is not compelled under Title 17 to schedule that meeting. My take on it would be that that's not the case here. Uh, section 724, Title 16, which is the dissolution section, uh, for school districts, I think that it's pretty clear as far as I, my reading, and I'm, I'm not your counsel, of course, uh, that that is something that is, is not within the select board's power, uh, discretionary power uh, to, uh, to decide based on the language of that, of that statute. So, so if you want to say that the signatures to the petition are stale, and so come back with those signatures that are fresh, and I'm not entirely sure that that's entirely accurate, but it, I think probably if you say that, I will then go and get a new set of signatures. Um, I, I prefer it if you get like, an, if you give me something from Ron that says that is in fact the case and that they need to be renewed. But sure of that, I, I, I guess I, I'd still honor that. Um, if you're going to say, well, even when you come back with a fresh set of uh, five foot percent plus signatures, we're going to consider this in our discretion as to whether or not we want to actually schedule this petition. I would really prefer you guys to talk to your counsel and just get them to write an opinion letter stating that. Um, does that does that make sense? You know what? We can schedule this for this Saturday. You know, at uh, nine o'clock. So why don't we put that on the agenda? Neil, it'll be all yours and uh, we'll go from there. Schedule. Yeah, had... I don't understand. You... Well, we'll schedule this meeting that you want. You can have your, uh, um, your petition meeting. It'll be this Saturday morning at nine. Okay, is, it, is that, is that, are you gonna, it's gonna be worn properly and everything? Well, give us three or four days, whatever it has to be, it'll be warned. I think you'll be the only one there. Certainly I won't, but, um, That's... Uh, but it'll be warned for you. Well, you know what, if I'm the only one there, I'm gonna vote for withdrawal and then it's gonna get certified to Secretary of State because all I have to have is 51% at the meeting to go to all the right. Yeah. All right. That's fine. We'll, I, we'll, we'll warn it for you then. Yeah, like I said, I, the, first, what I want to say first and foremost is the last thing I want to do is is get anybody on the select board heated. I, 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 that's not my objective here. I'm just, I'm looking for clarity as to how, I, I mean, I can tell you, and you can see from the outline, that my personal opinion, my conclusion based on what I know is that, that the Mortan should in fact withdraw from the consolidated school district. Uh, and I will at that meeting, that's the other thing, I will at that me meeting, I I'd like to present that and I'd like to suggest that that, that, that that's how the more town voters should vote. Um, the other thing to know is that, so right now we're talking about whether or not we're gonna have this meeting to discuss this question. And I, at that meeting, I would like to, as from the outline I sent you, have the opportunity to present the arguments. And I won't go into all that constitutional stuff that I, I threw in there. That was, you know, I just was trying to do that yesterday and I was half falling asleep. But uh, the, the question right now is, is whether to, to hold the meeting and then to discuss at that meeting whether or not more town should withdraw. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's not happening tonight. The tonight's question is not whether more town should withdraw from the consolidated school district or not. It's simply not to schedule a meeting so that more towners can get together and talk about the issues. And I definitely do feel that given what I know has happened at that school district, at the school board, that it's worth more towners getting together and find out about what's going on up there. I, I definitely feel that's the case. And I, I'd love to hear from Kristen again, because my, my sense is anybody who really knows kind of what's going on would, would agree that it's worth more town getting together, talking about what the heck is going on. John, do you have anything to say here? Did you say don't? Did you say Don? John or John? No, John, J O H N. John Hogeboom. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth, help me by increasing the volume. I turned this volume up. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Yeah, as I said before, I mean, if, if Kristen would, were to say, yes, let's go forward, you know, I, I would feel better about it. But, you know, I think we should wait at, at least, for the very least, until the next school board meeting and, and also to hear more from, from uh, Kristen um, and Lisa. And, um, you know, if they feel that it's, it's time to move forward, then I think then we, we should. But until that time, I don't, I don't think we should. But Neil, but the, the problem here, John, is that like Neil just said, he's compelling us to do, to have this meeting within 60 days. That's his point. And that's what his, uh, uh, when he was going over the statutes of law to us. Uh, so he's compelling us to do this within 60 days. Uh, so that's, unfortunate but so Neil, we will take care of you um and you have your meeting well can we wait till can we see if we're going to do the meeting after this next bo school board meeting can we do that no we can't we can't because of uh again neil's insistence with with the um with uh the petition tonight and that's again we've talked about this before um, but Neil gets on these things. It's his thing. It's his idea. Well, it's fine. Uh, again, I think it's not the correct time. Um, in fact, I know it's not the correct time. What, what is the, the next school meeting that everybody's referring to? When, when does that happen? I'm confused. I'm sorry. Then, so the next school board meeting is October 14th. Okay. And so 60 days from when I presented a petition uh, at the end of September, the end of November. So the only thing that the, that you, the, the select board is compelled is to to get to warn a meeting that happens before the beginning of December. I really think that there's going to be more information to know as far as what's happening with merger or moving kids or whatever it is by the end of October. Because I have a feeling the next two school board meetings, that's going to be the majority of what's being talked about. So I think that there'll be more feeling about what the plan will be concerning like next school year. So that, that's, that's the feeling I'm having at the moment. Would you- uh, Ray, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out the logistics part of this, of trying to have a meeting of this significance within 60 days. Uh, how are we gonna do that? How is that possible to get the? You're not going to have break. I'm sorry, but yes, it is impossible, and to have the information that you would need to make these type of decisions, right? It's, it's impossible. impossible. Neil thinks it's going to come out of the air, or people are just going to. Uh, I don't know what he thinks, but uh, we've tried to tell him before, and, and a lot of people have, and unfortunately. Um, as you can tell, it does not work. So um, again, it will be a lost cause in any time if we did want to do this, we've already shot ourselves in the foot. So Tom, would, would you prefer me to withdraw the petition and then to present it if and when the select board feels like they would like to move forward within a 60 day time frame? I think that would be what we would the, the board that's what i think i've heard from john from ray okay and, and would you be looking for fresh signatures or can i present you the petition that uh that i think i think i would get the most accurate information coming out of the, the uh unified district, presenting that information to those people that you're looking to sign your petition this is their plan they're looking to move the seventh and eighth, they're looking to move the fifth and sixth, or this is what they're doing. We need to get together as a town and discuss this. I, right now, there's just not enough information, Neil. You know, what's happening? You know, it's 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 been moving all over the board, and I'm sorry, I'm a little frustrated with it, but we've talked about it several times, and until we have an idea of what's going on, we don't want to be complacent, but, you know, to start scheduling meetings is, is meaningless. Um, because we won't have the information and we can really hurt ourselves more than we can help ourselves in, the, in what, you know, we may want to accomplish. I agree with that. So 
So do I. Yeah, me as well. Me as well. Okay, well, I, I mean, I certainly don't want to step on anybody. So, I, I you know, I, I, I can say, uh, <clears throat> um, and again, I, I would love to hear, you know, Kristen uh, 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 speak again. The, uh, you know, before Act 46, before consolidation, uh, school board meetings with, it was Ron and Peter and Gabe then, were, I'm sure, I mean, I never went to one or paid attention to one, but I'm sure they were just. Uh, boring events. Uh, and what you really have now is the, the, I mean, I do feel very strongly that Act 46, school consolidation, especially in this district, is a huge mistake. Uh, I think it's not a money saver. Uh, I think that we, there are definitely, it, it came out of, it has good rationales, which is uh, the, what was the shrinking demographics that we have in uh, the state and also um, uh, education costs that are going out of control. But it is not a solution to the problem. It's what I like to say is like the, those are problems like a, it's like uh, having a nail that you need to pound into a piece of wood. And Act 46 school consolidation is like is reaching for a fish instead of a hammer. Uh, and reality is going to catch up to the thing. I mean, it's it's five years since the statute was enacted. The 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 district has been in place for three and a half years now. And all, and what we had was a $40 million budget in the last, uh, the last budget vote. Uh, so so it, it's fine. I'm happy to kick back and wait. I don't think what's going to, reality is going to catch up. And the thing is just not going to work. Poor Kristen and Lisa are getting the crap kicked out of them up there because this, the school board is like nothing, that I mean, John is I think the only one on the board who's actually seen it. If you actually pay attention to these things, it's really it's like the school board from hell, basically. It is com the complete antithesis of what was going on in the Moortown school board. Uh, and you know, you got Christine Sullivan sniping at our our two reps uh, just at the last meeting, and that's just going to kind of keep going. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I would certainly defer to you folks, uh, and I certainly defer to Kristen if she's really okay with getting the, you know, continuing to get the, the crap kicked out of her by that school board. Uh, that's, that's okay, and I'm happy to wait. Um, I guess I would just want, so if I go and get signatures now, uh, if it, I guess I'd be curious to know, like, what sort of the time frame as to how I think um, that would last as far as being effective to present to the school board for a vote within a meeting within 60 days. Right. I, I just, I don't know. I think it needs to be with pertinent information. There's new information that, is, that that's coming out, Neil. And, and Neil, a lot, of, we don't disagree with a lot of what you're saying. It's just, it's, it's more of a timing issue. And I can understand, you know, you know, sometimes you, you really want to, you feel like, People are being complacent. There's not a lot going on, but and there hasn't been much going on. But if we start pushing where you, when you don't need to or where there's not a, an obvious need to, um, then it can hurt us. And but once we get the information, and yes, if Kristen comes back and says, "Look, at this is a real um, uh, bad thing going on here, and, and we need to to get out as quick as possible." And then we won't need your petition, Neil. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, schedule this meeting as as soon as we can. Once we have that that information, um, you know, we've talked about this for for some some time now. You know, we've been to court, before, so it's not like we're not willing to make the effort and do things. And we haven't been sitting on our hands. We've been just trying to to strategically do it. And and you know, at this point, we feel that we need to to hold back a bit. Uh, to hit, get more information, but it's, it's you know not a diss on you, and I and I again I appreciate your your enthusiasm for it, and sometimes we have got to rein you know things back a little bit, uh, but don't take it as you know the the board is pushing you away. We're just saying slow down a little bit. Uh, thank you for for you know keeping it in our uh, headlights here, uh, but uh, for the next few weeks let's let's see what happens, and then. You know, at that point, let's let's regroup, decide. All right, and then if we need to to schedule a meeting, I mean, I'm not concerned with your names. If if we if this board really feels that we need to schedule a meeting for something like that, we will schedule a meeting. 
I'm not going to need to be pushed by anyone. I just need to have the information that tells me that, all right, we're going in the wrong direction here. And then we will certainly do that. And, and, and timing is some of that. I mean, you know, with a pandemic, you got to be real careful when you're doing some of these things, um, just strategically again. Um, and with things starting to take such a little bit of a, a downturn uh, in the nation, again, with, with the outbreaks, you know, we need to be cognizant of just, just our, our uh, what's going on around, around, going along around us. Pardon me. Um, so again, I appreciate your patience with us tonight, um, but we'll look for your, you know, your help in the future. But let's, again, um, wait to see what Kristen has to say. Um, and then we can move forward. And, I, and yeah, Kristen, I'll get to you. Yep. Uh, you know, and hopefully we can spend maybe a few people get to these meetings as well. Go ahead, Kristen. When is your next select board meeting? Is it the 19th? Uh, it would be the third uh, Monday. So yeah, I think that is the check right here. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it would be. October 19th. So I can definitely uh, zoom in if you want and, and just give you an update on kind of what was discussed and, and if there's some sort of projected something going to be happening at the next school board meeting, if you'd like, I could definitely do that. And I can touch base with Lisa and see if she could also zoom in if that's something that you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, would like to kind of just keep updated. Sure. Why don't we put you on the schedule for is 6.15 or 6.30 work better for you? Either time. My, my husband takes our son to karate, so they're gone from 6 to 6.45 up in Stowe. So either time right. is what, what time would be best for you guys? Why don't we say 6.15? All right. So we'll plan on having you back uh, on the 19th at 6.15 and we can hear from you then. How's that sound? Yeah, and I'll uh, let Lisa know too, so that she can see if she can, I, you know, she, I think she was gonna try to attend today, uh, tonight as well, but maybe with a little bit more warning, you know, she's got two very young kids. She yeah. might be able to do that. So I'll, I'll send her a text and, and let her know for 6.15 on the 19th. Perfect, thank you, Kristen. Okay. Neil, how's that sound with you? That sounds, that sounds great, Tom, I, I, I appreciate it. And uh, so, um, so I will withdraw the position. I don't know if you want me to do anything official. That's so fine. Why don't you verbally, um, and we'll just work on it from here, but I appreciate all the work you've put into that stuff. Yeah, and, and you know, if and when the time comes, and the, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make a point of, uh, of just uh, of, of zooming in as well in two weeks, just to... Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Yeah, and, um, uh, and then if, I, you know, if and when the time comes and I can actually help out, then just reach out and I will do that. No, we'll, we'll certainly have you and, uh, you know, your presentation. It looked good. Like I said, there was a lot of interesting things I'd like to hear sometime, but not in a, a couple hour meeting. I think you had about a 10 hour meeting set up. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyways, that's good. So we're going to move on as a board. Thank you, everyone, for your discussion. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Neil. Uh, have a good evening. Good work done. Yeah, thanks. All right, uh, Don Wexler, you're up next. You're going to talk about... Uh, the meeting committee and, and how things are progressing there. Well, I don't really know if we've made any progress as of yet, but coming right out of the box. I mean, uh, we identified, as I sent in the meeting and the, the notes that we sent out, uh, different avenues of things that we need to explore. I did some follow up that I had mentioned in the meeting that I would do, which was. I did speak to Karen Horn and try to get a sense about what other towns are doing. Um, and also uh, to uh, help try to navigate the uh, League of Cities and towns and also this ACCD guidelines. I mean, it's like just going down a rabbit hole. There is so much uh, information and, and such that I'm not even sure uh, I, I don't have a handle on it myself right now. So, um, and I know the library has been following a certain protocol as far as how they're using the town hall. And obviously the town office, there's protocol set up for that. Um, in terms of our, what space we use, 
there's a lot of different issues in either one of those two places. Um, and then just rolling along with some other information I found, which I'm sure Cheryl Lynn probably knows about and maybe Sasha, but there are grants for, per se, which unfortunately the due dates are coming to a close like up to 15, but say we to add filters to the town office, if we were going to be able to measure that space and have three or four people meet there or however, you know, cause we were also talking about committees and whether, you know, how would we handle that? And then the cleaning and the air system. And like I said, there are some grants from the state, but uh, whether well, they're going to extend those. Cheryl Lynn's good about doing uh, grants on short notice. That's what, that's how no, she no. works best. I understand. I, and I know she mentioned, I think I heard her mention that with the state's been reimbursing for cleaning supplies and such. So, you know, I'm sure maybe she's filed, you know, put some paperwork in for that. And the last, Last thing as just, you know, going through this is I and I'm, I don't really know because obviously I could barely get on last meeting. So I'm not the techiest guy in town, but I did get start to get some information about how we could set up a town. There could be a town Zoom account and not each committee having their own Zoom accounts. You know, so I don't have a lot of the particulars of that, but I have learned that that's what some other towns are doing. And that sometimes I've set up a thing like in the town office where they have a big monitor and it allows more people to, to join a meeting because they're on one person is at the off town office and everybody else is remotely, but they're able to control that, you know, that large screen and one person can come to that for space and, you know, be at the meeting. You know, so there you go. I mean, we've got a lot more work to do in terms of seeing where we can meet. All right, well, no, good. I, you had good meeting notes and I just wanted to acknowledge that and make sure that we're keeping it moving along because um, it's something that I think is gonna be with us for a long time. So, you know, we need to figure it out. Right, I mean, we even have to talk about town meeting. You know, we're gonna, that's gonna be yeah. coming up. We'll do a town meeting. No, I agree. So, uh, um, you know, I would throw that right up on your your. Uh, I mean, agenda. I guess I'd like to see if I can get if the group will get back together again. If we can try to figure out how we can have another meeting, and or, you know, what different pieces of this people can work on, you know. And so you may be able to do your your next meeting do uh, do a Zoom. And what's that? Maybe you should do a Zoom meeting for your next meeting with your group. Right, yeah, that would be a good idea. We could do and that. And then uh, assign out tasks and get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's what we'll do. We'll set one up. Uh, great, thank you. Um, okay, moving forward, uh, does anyone, or does anyone else have anything want, they wanna to add to that discussion? Yeah, let's see nothing. All right, um, next item up on the agenda is the, the dump truck. Um, I'm trying to see, is Stefan, are you on? Oh, does not look like it. All right, so I spoke to Stefan earlier this, this evening or this afternoon or later this afternoon, and they're still waiting for the, the, uh, the Mack truck that's getting the brakes and inspection sticker. And that is supposed to be done tomorrow. Um, he, Stefan, is going to call the uh, dealership in New Hampshire to try to schedule later this week for them to come up. They're going to bring up um, their proposed uh, new vehicle, and they want to take a ride in the the uh, the Mac that we're we're trading in. So uh, hopefully we can get that those final numbers in by the end of the week. Um, and then we'll have that. And then we'll go back to um, international and see if they can do anything better because we have, we'll have put probably three to $4,000 more into that truck uh, in, in an inspection sticker. So uh, it should be worth more to them at that point. Uh, and then uh, we may have a special meeting to make that decision because we don't, we need to, um, get off on, you know, get off the pot, if you will, uh, so that we don't um, end up without a truck. 
or with one with a broken body. So um, that, so look forward to the next few days of if, uh, something, a quick Zoom meeting to go over that, that information, It'll probably be beginning of next week. Um, Sasha, if you're on, do you have any um, reports for us? Um, I... Mute yourself. <laughs> Okay. Oh. I think it's Ray. Yeah, Ray. Thank you. Okay, Sasha, go ahead. All right. Um, <laughs> sorry. Access mobility. Um, they sent out that contract and just need approval for that. And wanted to make sure everybody got the response from Mike Woods on the list of errors and omissions from last year. And then we have the Charles O. Davis that needs to be talked about in an executive session. All right. Ray, thank you for uh, speaking with Mike on that. Um, and sh so sh Cheryl Lynn, hopefully we'll maybe now hear something back on that. Um, and the other thing, Sasha, I'd want to make sure, um, let's put Shane on the agenda for next, um, next time so we can get that, uh, animal control contract that we need to sign as well. Okay. And there's one more thing. Sure. Okay an update on the resolution for the planning commission we just use the same uh signature page from the board okay and that's it any other just um announcements or anything like that no you're good yep all right callie are you on Yes. Is there anything uh, that you have for reports, communications, communications or announcements? Um, I did talk with Stefan, I believe the end of last week, he called me just to update me on a truck they had brought in to get some work on for the fire department. Hey, what was that? That was a pump, was that, can you share a little bit about that? I guess. Um, they had brought a truck in to get some work done, and that work was going to be more than what it was originally planned for. I want to say he said it was probably going to be about 5000 to get it fixed. Okay. We have that in his budget. We'll probably have to move some stuff around. Um, he may not be able to do some other, other things, but... Um, we, I did look at his budget this week and there's some money to pay for that. Yep. Anything else, Kelly? Nope, that was it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Ray. Um, we had a complaint from Dean Moulton about the property pins. Um, that the world crew taken out some of the property pins. Uh, I've, talked, I've spoken to Dean, I haven't looked at it, but I would guess at this point that we'll probably have to hire um, a company to put them back in. Um, I haven't spoken to the road crew uh, at this point. I, I don't know how we're going to get them back in without a, a surveyor to locate where they should be. I don't know why we why we took them out. We're doing some ditch work, and you know, I don't know. He said they yeah. were marked. You know, just going to be one of those things. Probably going to be a fifteen hundred dollar expense. I think to relocate the pens. If we can get it done this year, I don't know. But I, I have spoken to Dean, and I told him that I would tell the select board, and I assume you want me to go ahead and, and, and go with it. Yeah, ab absolutely. Can you work with Sasha or, or to line up whoever we use? I know we used American before. Right. Um, uh, I can't remember his name, but uh, like you said, it, sh it shouldn't be much. But, yeah, it's got to be done by we just can't be out there tapping pins into the um, people's 
you know, boundary lines. We need to make sure it's correct. Yep. And that's one thing I'll put a note, just chat with the road crew on to, I'm, I'm sure that's good. I've never heard of this before, but I want to make sure that that's, there needs to be a protocol if they see something like that or hit it. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have to hear from the property owner. Yeah. Hear from the road crew. They, they should is know this, when they do it. Is this something we can check in? Because I know our property pins are big, tall, long stakes. So just to double check and make sure. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, what, what, what do you mean, I double check? I mean, if, if they're not there, they're usually are long stakes. They're usually around two feet long, a foot to two foot long. And if they're not there, I, you know. Dean says they were there when they started, and I have no reason to think they weren't there. Okay, that's fine. I was just asking. No, we'll, I mean, we'll check with the road crew, but... Um... You know, I can't believe they you know, someone's pins are, I mean, it's just something that's there. If your boundary line is there, it's there. Um, so anyways, we'll, we'll check with the crew to make sure that um, maybe they didn't know they, they, they hit them. I don't know. Um, anything else, Ray? No, I did have one question um, going back to the, the last meeting when we were talking about selling the truck to Shane um, and Tom. I didn't know if we'd gone into any uh, an agreement with him or anything like that, bill of sale or anything like that. But it seems like there should be, either way he does it, it should be clear how it's done and, and we should know how, how it's handled. Yeah, you know, I have not, um, I'm gonna say nothing's happened because, you know, uh, since then, since that conversation with the truck, I, I can't believe that, um, it's moved out of the yard and, uh, but yeah, I agree with you. There needs to be, uh, you know, I think really what needs to be done, it needs to be sold. It should be sold and then a cash price paid for it. I think once we start trading stuff, one, it needs to be, um, almost put out for bid, you know, you, that we're going to trade this truck for bid work you know, for hauling sand, it's going to be equal for everyone. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a weird, I mean, as I looked into it, it's like, it's almost goes into our procurement procurement policy and how we do things. So it's, it's really made things gray. So I think to make it not gray, we just sell the truck, get what we can out of it cash and, and leave it be. Um, so I think when I talk to um, the road crew, uh, down there, that's what we'll we'll talk about with them. Because I think otherwise, um, you know, I figured it out. If you know, we'd need I don't know thirteen, fourteen hundred yards of, of gravel for it, or, or, or rock, and where are we going to put that? We don't have the room to put what the truck is worth. So it's it's just not um, not probably something we want to pursue. It definitely be over more than one year period. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess we would have to, I, you know, because we'd have no way to put all that rock. John, what about you? What you got anything for us? Uh, yeah. The only thing um, I have is uh, uh, Chris Stevenson. Uh, in terms of the rec committee, um, he's been in touch with me regarding Green Mountain Power, and uh, to talk with somebody over there to. Uh, prevent them from spraying herbicides along the power line uh, because, I mean, it's, it's preserved property uh, and, uh, you know, our town forest, and it's just not a good thing to do, I think, with the school kids going up there and everything else. And I guess he got some flack um, from um, a representative from Green Mountain Power, and um, they did ask for Tom, both yours and my contact information. I haven't heard from them. I didn't know if you had or not. No, I haven't heard anything. Okay. Well, I'll, I will give that person a call because I, I actually spoke with him um, directly and he said he wasn't the person to talk to. But when Chris spoke to him, <laughs> so 
Um, I don't know what's going on there, but I will I will give him a call. All right, and if there's something they want to come in and chat to us about, but yeah, if there's, it's probably not a good thing if kids are going to be up there playing in that, but maybe they have some so, something they want to share. But yeah, definitely check into it. Okay, that'd be great. Anything else, John? That's it. Don, sitting up in the top chair on my screen in the middle. What you got for us? Anything? Don Wexler. Take yourself off. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. So when we get to old business, we will, is is the time we'll bring up some stuff, old business. This is just for if I had anything new. That's right. Or some, you know, some college you had something, you know, to bring up, to share with the board that, you know, something different, you know? No, no, uh, no, all, all's good. Uh, you know, yep. Sounds okay. good. All right. No, I don't have anything new. All right. Nor do I. Um, Cheryl, I see you sitting there with a smile on. Is there anything you want to share with us tonight? No, I'm just here. In case you need Why, sh- just to observe. That was nice. All right. So now we're, why don't we move into old business? And Don, you have any old business you'd like to share with us? Well, I was just curious from um, uh, maybe a little update. There was, I saw we had a final, there was going to be a walkthrough on with Pike's final paving and the sidewalks, how that's turned out. Um, and then if anybody had any other information about the bridge, then than what we just read in the paper and such. Um, other, you know, so that was one old business item. I think Ray and can then address I was that. Curious, whatever, can, Wait a second, Don, why don't we let Ray address that for us, your first yeah. task. Go ahead, Ray. Okay. So um, here's what I know. Um, I, don't, I, I don't have any update on the bridge part, but uh, as far as Pike, you know, they are aware of, they have, you know, some significant cleanup to do, especially on the granite curbing, the emulsion on the curbing. I, I, we haven't been able to nail them down as far as when they're going to do it. They keep on saying they want colder weather to do it, but we've talked with the, with the state, um, several, Chris and, and uh, the state engineer, and they're both aware of it. So I would hope, and I'm going to follow it up with them tomorrow because, <clears throat> you know, uh, we just got to get this cleaned up uh, we, so we can finish our contract. And hopefully Pike will be out here within a week. I would, I would hope. Um, there are some other cleanup items. Um, the grass, you know, I really do anticipate uh, that Dubois will be coming back in the spring to do some touch up on the uh, some of the grass. It's not going to take, but uh, but that's normal. Uh, other than that, I, I think pretty much that's it for contract work clean up on our part. John, what do you think? Yeah, in uh, terms of uh, Pike, um, they did say they would be out there. And they just raced up with the cold weather. Um, and, um, Chris Hunt had suggested that we do the walkthrough anyway, but, you know, if, but I haven't, uh, between, um, EPI and myself, we haven't really talked much more about it. Um, so as, as Ray said, you know, if it's, if it's a week or so, I think we can wait, but I mean, sooner or later, you know, so we can just put this whole thing to. To bed. I just feel I do feel uncomfortable uh, doing a final walkthrough, you know, until Pike has actually cleaned up the mess. Yeah, that's what the, I had a conversation back today, and those are the, that's the way GPI feels, and, and rightfully so. That uh, you know we got to get Pike done so everything's clean. All right. Agreed. Thanks, Ray, for for working on that. Don, what else did you have or question about? Um, well, just some things that maybe we can still, that uh, can be on our radar a little bit, or maybe you might be able to, whatever became, there was a 
uh, one of the things we talked about uh, last week were the oxygen tanks that I think the fire department needed to get some more oxygen. So, uh, yeah, I can't so remember. I, I talked to Stefan about that, um, and they were originally going to come. Uh, in fact, they still have a grant that they haven't heard back from yet. Um, Sherilyn and, and Stefan both have checked on it for themselves and me in the last two weeks. And I think uh, probably more often okay. than that. But, um, so, but I did talk to Stefan about that. If this grant does, does not materialize what, what we're going to do, um, do we still need those 10 and how many do we need? And so he's come up with a strategy of maybe uh, looking to get uh, budget two uh, over the next uh, four or five years. So rather than, or yeah, I think it was just two per year uh, to minimize that cost, which would still be, you know, five to $8,000 um, rather than that, you know, I think they were going to go for five of them. So $30,000, so or $40,000, pardon me. Um, so I told them that was probably the way to go. Um, they could still, again, if they don't get the grant this year, um, apply for it next year, but we could probably budget, um, two, uh, within the budget so that they can start replenishing those or, or adding to those that they do need. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, believe me, team, I'm not, I don't mean to like bring stuff up to like make the meeting go longer or anything like that, but I just have two other items. Don, you ago. know, you want you bring up anything, and, and if there's other things, you know, things sometimes get forgotten or whatever. You know, we're not a professional board here, yeah. so anytime yeah. you want to bring something up, just to make sure we're doing it or wondering, feel free. Yeah. Okay. So, I was just wondering how we can maybe uh, circle back or check in with the finance committee because they were going to be maybe looking into some possibilities of uh, like how going forward down how people might or if we, you know, if we might change the format for paying taxes and such. And, and I want, maybe John will be able to answer this because I was talking to someone in town the other day who, who told me that, um, oh, I got to put my bad, charge my battery. Uh, he told me that, um, can you still hear me? Yep. Um, Go ahead. That they, there was a time and I actually kind of don't remember it, but that you actually could pay your taxes, you know, and get a discount that back third, uh, 15, 20 years ago, that you, if you paid them right away, when you got the bill, you got 3%. Is, is that something you remember, John, or something? Uh, I remember perhaps 1%, but that was, oh, that was 30 plus years ago. I believe that was before I even got on the board. Oh, okay, well, maybe this per people's memories, you know how that goes, right? But Don, I think you bring up a good, good point, and something you know, four or five months ago, we, you know, we we chatted about it. But this is the, the time to do that. So, Sasha, why don't we um, send a note to the finance committee if they could look into this with the with the idea if it's something that they thought it's feasible. But bring it back to us. But we'd like to have it on the uh the ballot uh, yeah i guess we would have an article with it um for this march so that being said it would have to come to us by the beginning of january for us to vet it but um why don't we go ahead and do that and then that way we can see all right is there you know they can look into it and john you know you, you know all right if the bill goes out july 1st and we get it and we can get everyone to pay you know what you know, as opposed to what we're borrowing it. And I think we borrowed some this year. So there's some numbers there that people can work with and figure out to see, you know what, Hey, let's give everyone uh, one, two, three, whatever percent if they pay by this, because it can save us a certain amount on the, the back end. So no, I think right. it's the appropriate time to start to address that. And then I was also curious because I know that some towns do, do, and I don't, know, maybe it's, it would be too much of pain in the, um, a pain in the a pain <laughs> um, to have maybe uh, payments twice a year or something, or, you know, I've heard of some towns that do four times a year, which I mean, maybe that's a lot of pay. I have no idea what that means, but if, if that's maybe. Both John and Cheryl Lynn are on the, the committee. 
Cheryl Lynn, why don't you write that down? And you may have a very strong opinion of that of two or four times a year. And you may, you know, so you're a good one to have on that committee because you know what, what it might what it take. Um, well, but then you may find it to be better because you're getting money in all the time. So again, I think that's a good, good thing to look at within that committee. The big problem with that, Don, is that um, so many people pay through their mortgage and the mortgage company just pays them once a year. Oh, there you go. And that's what I was going to say. I brought this concern up before, but your escrow is not going to pay your taxes early. So any new homeowners in town aren't going to have that option to do that if their taxes are escrowed. And I know of at least two just on Jones Brook Road, myself is one of them that, I mean, sometimes getting the bank to pay them on time is difficult, but they're <laughs> not going to have the option for that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something for this committee to, to think about and look at, you know, and it may be an easy, is it legal? Can you do it because um, of those escrow situations? And I think a lot of people do have their taxes escrowed, but I think I, I see signs as I drive through Vermont, taxes due all different times of the year. So why don't we look into it and just see, but those are good. Those are the type of questions. Um, thank you, whoever brought those up, uh, Kelly or, or, or whoever. Um, to, to vet this out to see if it will work. And then, I, might, uh, I, might, I might just mention that uh, uh, Eunice Ferris, God rest her soul, when she was treasurer, she said, she always said, we'll take your money anytime. So if you want to pay <laughs> quarterly, pay quarterly and we'll take it. There you go. All right. It's a little hard uh, for some of us to get off the stick and do that, but I don't know. Uh, Don, did you have one more thing? Or, no, one Ray, last you had, I know you wanted is, to, what, Ray, Ray wanted to comment on something we were talking about, Ray? Yeah, no, I just wanted to, is it, is it true that we can only offer a discount on the town portion of the taxes? That, I, again, I have no idea, but that's, I, Sherilyn's shaking her head yes, or nodding her head yes. Um, so so yeah. I would say that is, so it would be a very smaller portion of our tax bill, but um, so again, the committee would have to look at that because you know it may not be enough money to make it make a difference. Okay, good, good question, Ray. Uh, very one, good question. Don, one last the quickie. Well, no, my my wife is going to get it. Yeah, All right. I'll mute it. For You muted yourself there, buddy. Yeah, I there. I just didn't want you to have to put up with the phone ringing. So, oh, that's right. Okay, one last quickie is that a while ago we got a an email, I believe, from uh, Green Mountain Transit, saying that someday they would like to, they would love to. I mean, obviously we're in COVID nineteen land, but they would wanted to brainstorm. They're happy to meet with us and talk to the select board to see how they could maybe help serve the community. And, and such. So I wonder if we could just still keep that out there on the radar to do sometime. You know, maybe we could have a pickup state, you know, pickup area in front of the town hall or at the store or, you know, whatever. Yep. Donna, I have talked to them. Yeah. She's going to be at one of the next meetings. Oh, great. Oh, yep. good. Perfect. Hello? Hello? Sorry, everyone, I've, I'm getting low. Plug in. All right. Sorry about that, I was losing power. All right. So is there any other uh, old business anyone would like to chat about? Uh, yeah. Um, I was wondering about um, Blodgett Trail. Yeah, I, you know what, we need to uh, check with Cheryl on that. I asked her 
a little while ago when, when she was doing some stuff in with, actually when she was taking your place, John, to look into that because she has the, the, the best information on that. So let me circle back with her and Cheryl Lynn can probably um, say something to her as well, but I'll call her tomorrow and see if she was able to look into that. Okay, great. Because we both had kind of the same recollect recollection of what was supposed to happen and we haven't so uh but i think she was on top of that so we should probably continue to have her follow that up anything else john no nope all right thank you uh ray or callie anything on old business you want to chat with see ray shaking his head no and callie i can't see no right. All right. Um, anyone have any uh, any new business to discuss? So I have. Um, see anyone coming up with anything? I have a couple things we have to go into executive session for. We have an employee um, situation we need to discuss, and then we also have to um, discuss uh, the uh, Charles O. Uh, Charles O'Day Fund. So um, just before we check, I wanna make sure that no one has anything else they wanna share here in public, new or old business, um, because then otherwise I'm gonna be um, clicking off only the board uh, so we can address these few issues. And there will be no, um, no action. I don't see any action being, no action tonight being taken out of these uh, out of this executive session. We, and if there is, we'll re report uh, that in our minutes. So anyone, uh, whether it's Hadley, how are you tonight? Uh, Want to do that? You can check in the morning if there's any action that comes from them. Um, Cheryl, and I don't think I need you, but if I do, I'll uh, give you a text. If, she had some HR information stuff that we were looking at. But anyways, um, uh, so at this point, I'd move to go into executive session to discuss uh, employee uh, personnel. Ray uh, just second that as he, he did come up mute, but I could read his lips. Um, so all in favor, uh, give me a thumbs up or say aye. 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 All right, John. All right. So uh, everyone else, I'm going to say goodbye to you tonight um, as we go into executive session. So Hadley, uh, Michelle, uh, Sasha, uh, Mad River TV and Orca, if you guys could um, uh, jump off, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Will do. Bye, everyone. Yep. All right.